Hey, thanks for being a part of the conversation. Let's do some pod crashing. Episode number 230 is with Damon John from the podcast That Moment with Damon John. I'm well, Arrow. I Man, I love that picture of you. <laughs> Just fun stuff, man. That's what it's all about. Yeah, are you Native American? I study everything about it. If you were inside this studio here, there's so many Native American tools, and I mean tools. These are not toys. It's not like when I when I look at a uh, a dream catcher. That's that that was a a writing board. They used that to send messages and to share messages with future generations. Where are you from? Where are you at right now? I, I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina now, but I grew up in the state of Montana. Charlotte, North Carolina. I want to make sure I get your number because as we talk about that moment, I want to make sure that I have you as one of the guests on my podcast because I think that I can learn a lot from you. And that's the whole purpose of the podcast. So um, and we can air this part, too, because I want people to know that my thirst for knowledge is exactly what that moment's about. Don't you love being a student of life? Because there's so much out there and it's like, I, I mean, books are a great thing. But when you add conversation to it, that to me is part of the journey. A hundred percent is fluid. Um, and, you know, books are a great thing. And I, I write a lot of books, but I'm dyslexic. So um, I have to listen to them in audio form. And then even then I need to go back and read the books a couple of times because I want to make sure I absorb the information the right way. My grandson is dyslexic and, and the journey and his travels. How do you make it through that mountain or around that storm? You know, um, so by the way, eight of the 12 sharks are dyslexic. So your grandson is in really good, uh, you know, companies. Seven presidents were dyslexic. 42% of entrepreneurs are dyslexic. Um, you know, you know, dyslexia actually was put on LinkedIn as an asset. Um, but, you know, it wasn't that easy. And for all the people here who are listening to us who, who may be dyslexic or have a dyslexic child, it also has a high level of incarceration of dyslexic people because – you know, when a child's in the third grade or the first or second, whatever grade, and they don't want to lift up their hand and go, huh? Because yeah. they don't get it. There is dyslexia when a child cannot read or process information the proper way. There's no pill like ADD for ADD and ADHD where the drug companies can actually make money and then give you more education on it. So if a child is saying they're dyslexic, the only way to fix it is they have to actually work harder mm -hmm. and learn more ways to process information. And they don't have the right people around them. Like, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure your grandson has you because you know he's dyslexic already. Mm -hmm. They don't have the right people around him. They may hear people go, hey, uh, I don't know what dyslexia is, but I think you're pretty smart. You want to stand on this corner <laughs> to make some money? Yeah. Um. So I think I'm glad that you and I just touched on that as well, because it's really something that can either empower a, a child. The podcast gives people the opportunity to see themselves grow it's not one of those where you're going to guilt trip somebody but they they go to the to the show to listen to it to find out how they can take steps absolutely so you know that moment with damon john is kind of like how you and i opened up where i want to find out more about you and i'm gonna i'll be asking you know why did you when was the first time that you really started to understand a, a lot of the native americans challenges or victories or we may have had a lot of information uh that was shared to us that was inaccurate yep. and when was that moment that you found out that that information was painted differently and where were you in life or you know, when I'm talking to J.B. Smooth, how was it when you were a comedian, but you weren't making any money because, you know, a lot of people think they could, you know, say jokes, you know, or or how did what was that moment when you got on to curb? What happened to bring you there? Where were you in your life? Mm -hmm. And I go really narrow and deep on what were you thinking? What were you wearing? Were you driving? Were you living on somebody, a friend's couch? Were you homeless? Did you have a romantic interest? Why did they stick by you? And when I go into that, Everybody can relate because everybody has a form of struggles and or victories. Um, and, and that's what it is out. I love the way that Ice-T talks about transformations because I believe that we don't study our transitions. And when somebody talks about their transformation, it, it serves as an invitation that, hey, look into your own eyes. Yeah, because, you know, you look at somebody who, you know, he's a very complex individual who, came up in the streets, was a gangbanger, but yet then went and served our country, then came home and was a kind of a gangbanger, then a rapper, then, you know, somewhat looking, you know, like a pimp. And then, um, then, you know, had the, had, 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 had cases against him because of the music of cop killer and then became the longest running cop on television, uh, representing big brands and big companies. Uh, but yet, you know, and then, telling the kids I was wrong to be this kind of kid. It wasn't cool. This is all I had. And it's not cool to be 
uh, disrespectful to women. I have a lovely wife and I have an amazing daughter and you see him grow right in front of your eyes. Um, and he's not, he, even though he's IC, he's not too cool to admit I made mistakes. Yeah. I was growing, you know, and, and watch me grow and watch me make more mistakes, but watch me grow. And I think that's important. This past weekend, Holly Furtick of Elevation Church said that we are all tired. It's a part of life to be tired and that our greatest moments come from being tired. Do you agree with that? Never heard it before, but that's extremely powerful. Yeah, I was tired. I was tired of watching the kids in my community who had money only be a drug dealer, you know, and I was saying to myself, I can't do that. Um, but I want to bring joy to people. I, I was tired of, of, you know, uh, keeping it, you know, before social media came out, I, I started writing books as a dyslexic person because I was tired of everybody saying, Oh man, you need money to make money. And look at us, we're doing yeah. so well. And none of us make any mistakes in life. That's not what entrepreneurship is about. You know, I, I get on, I, you know, on Shark Tank, they call me the people shark, but you want to see me get nasty? I'm <laughs> tired of when they, when they come on there with somebody has a million dollars in the bank and, and they have their hand, their hat in their hand for a million dollars. Nobody in America can understand that. Yeah. How dare you come on this show and try to abuse the platform? Maybe you should be up in Silicon Valley, but I'm going to, the, 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 the people shark is going to curse you out that day because you took that spot away from a, a, a family that probably risked everything and just needs a couple of dollars to help them get over the hump and become more successful. So yes, I'm tired too. Those are our eyes. I mean, because what you just explained is exactly the way my wife and I, we we are watching that show from day one you guys started and we will talk about that same exact thing. What are they doing there? What are they doing? Yeah, they're pigs. <laughs> you know, so if they're there doing that, Either there's a couple of things. They, they they didn't educate themselves on the show enough to know that it's kind of more for the people or they don't care about other people and they took that opportunity away. And what do you think they're going to be as business partners? How do you think they're going to operate? Yeah. See, I look I look at Shark Tank as being an introduction to small business America because we will sit there and research it after they've been on the show and to, and, and to buy from them. 100%. And that's exactly what it's for. And you know what? For all the people now who don't feel like they want to support people with it, but the people on the Shark Tank, you know what I tell you, tell people? Do an Instagram story or do something when you walk into a small business that you like. You know what? Even if you don't want to be on social media yourself, just put on social media the places and the things you buy that you like and the things that you don't like and say, hey, this person is not doing well. Right. So help help govern what's going on. But more importantly, give people a free platform and give them an opportunity. And and that those are little things you can do to help the mom and pop, uh, you know, uh, great businesses in this country. How do you like Marcus Samuelson? I love the way that he took that word no and he turned it into fuel. He is. I mean, uh, the man, I mean, all the people that I um, have on, I admire. Marcus is the kindest person. But, you know, to be a I mean, think about how it is to be a chef. Yeah. You know, you can cook for 10 different people and every all of them will have a different taste palette and a different experience. Now, imagine doing that for a thousand people a night every night. <laughs> that is some serious, <laughs> serious, serious, uh, you know, work. But you have to love it. And yes, he took no and made no. And I mean, he risked everything, as you heard on that podcast. He, he left his girlfriend yep. at the time, moved to a whole nother country, lived in a, a room of four or five individuals. You know, it was the early 90s. He loved Tribe Called Quest while he was just yeah. going there and working for free at places. Never knew who he would be today. Wow. So doing the podcast, are you like pretty much the rest of us? Are you, are you always watching the numbers or do you, is it like the radio term? If you go by the numbers, you die by the numbers. You know, I have the joy of not having to watch numbers these days in life. Um, and when I don't watch numbers, it works out. Uh, when I do watch numbers, I get frustrated. I whatever. I just got to I got to over deliver and keep saying, what kind of product am I going to put out that is different? That's going to make people excited. And the numbers will come, but I don't have to look at numbers, but so much. But don't you love that connection that you've got with us now that it, it really is? It's like we've invited you into the front seat of our car and we're just having a conversation and, and you, you bring such realism to it. Yeah, you know, what? I'm just having a conversation. With, you know what I'm doing? I'm putting a microphone on a, on a conversation I'd already have. Yeah, <laughs> maybe maybe I'm not maybe I'm not cursing or they're not cursing. I wanted to be friendly to everybody, or maybe there may be not. Yeah, you know, there may be a little bit of it that is not put in there, like you know the boring stuff. But I'm pulling out the best, the <laughs> juiciest stuff for people to learn. You got to come back to the show anytime. The the door is always going to be open for you, sir. 
All right. Well, I appreciate it. And uh, I think you're going to be coming on to my show, hopefully, before I come back to yours, because I want to get this done uh, sooner than later. And uh, man, I appreciate it. And, you know, that's right. That's right there. What it is about a brand. Right. You, I come on. I've never met you before. I see your your picture and then I talk to you for for literally 60 seconds. You're not pitching me. I'm not pitching you. And now I need to know more about you. And that, that's exactly how people should think about themselves as a personal brand. Oh, you've got a brilliant heart. Man, you be brilliant today, okay? All right, man. You too.